eternal shame are pumping hundreds of millions of dollars into organizations like Planned Parenthood, sinister organizations with an international reach who have built enormous industry on killing babies for profit. But do you know what still gives me hope? That the millions at their disposal can't buy for the abortion industry what you freely give to protect tiny vulnerable children. They can't buy your energy. They can't buy your imagination. They can't buy your commitment. And they can't buy that selfish determination that I see in youth defence when it seeks day after day, week after week, to defend mothers and babies. We began with a simple principle 20 years ago, now almost 20 years ago in 1992. And that simple principle still guides all the pro-life work that takes place in 68 Capel Street in the Life House when we need defence or in the Life Institute. Life is precious, and because it is precious, we take the following stand. We will not allow our children to be killed at any stage, in any place, not in our country, and not in our name. And the first thing is complacency. It would be very remiss of us to underestimate the power and the resources of the forces that want to crush Ireland's pro-life ethos. Human Rights Watch are only a small part of it. We're currently seeing Planned Plan Parenthood sponsor a legal case which is bringing Ireland to the European Court of Human Rights in an attempt to overturn our pro-life laws. Because you see, our ban on abortion makes us a light to the world. But that light also attracts a great many dark forces who want to crush our pro-life ethos. And as a nation, we're under constant pressure from the European Union to legalise abortion. And the Irish government is massively funding abortion referral agencies right here in this country with your taxes. So sometimes I feel that it's almost like a miracle that our pro-life laws are still standing. And you defence needs your prayers, but they also need your active daily help in the work to protect life. They need you to rise up and to seize the day. And in 1995, John Heaney and I had the great privilege of meeting Pope John Paul II, the late, great John Paul II, in Castel de Dalfone, Rome, for a private audience. And he gave us this message for you to fence. Continue in your apostolate and be courageous. And he then sent it to me, the head of the Pontifical Academy for Life. And he gave this message to young people in Ireland to give you to fence your active, daily help in the work that they do to protect life. And that's what we're asking of you today. Because everything you defense has achieved has been only because so many volunteers give so much of their time to do so many amazing things. Putting together a major conference like this, organizing the Valley for Life, being on the street, being outside clinics, being in schools, organizing on campus, scoring hits on YouTube, building up Facebook, all of these things take time and they take energy. And the more time and energy that is given, the more we can do to protect life. It's that simple, that's the equation. So don't leave it to others. Get involved, become active, find out what you can do. Join the most exciting youth movement for social justice in this country today. Yes. Brian Kemper has a brilliant slogan which sums it up succinctly. Social justice begins in the womb. Justice, listen to that word. Because there is no single greater injustice than to allow an innocent child to be ripped from a mother's womb. There is no single greater injustice than to deny another human being his or her humanity in order to destroy that person. To destroy a child who cannot raise her eyes in her own defense, who cannot speak or who cannot be heard and who desperately needs your voice. And that brings me to the second thing we should guard against. And that's fear of trepidation. To quote, again, John Paul II, be not afraid. This is not a fearful battle. Pro-life work is not a burden. It's a positive, life-affirming, life-enhancing movement, and we should be glad to be a part of it. We don't have difficulties to overcome. But these are challenges that we can meet and overcome together. And not all pro-life activists can say that so easily. And we should be grateful for the freedoms that we have. This is Cheng Guangcheng, and he's a lawyer who lives in the Shandong province in China. As you can see, he's also blind. 
More than 10 years ago, he began to document the forced late-term abortions and sterilizations that were taking place in his province. So China's not exactly a bastion of freedom, and the Chinese authorities told him to stop. And where most people would have capitulated, he refused. So they laid trumped-up charges against him, and they jailed him for four years. And in prison, he was beaten, he was denied medical treatment, and he was poorly fed. His wife was placed under house arrest. And just last month, this man, this man Cheng Guang Cheng, was freed. And when he came out, do you know what he said? He said that he plans to continue on doing his pro-life work. That was it. That man is a hero, and his heroic work brought the attention of the world to what was happening to unborn children and to their mothers in China. But you know, there are many pro-life heroes like Chen Guangchen in this room. People who run for pro-life activists, the right to protest, to educate, to bring people together, and to speak out against abortion. And I know that when it came, if it came down to the wire, the second generation of youth defense would not be wanting. That you have the character and the courage that says, this is my country. These are my brothers and sisters. And we will not be moved because we're here to keep Ireland abortion free. Let me tell you, in 20 years of working for the unborn child, your work is going to save lives. And that's possibly the most tremendous, meaningful achievement that any of us will attain in our lifetimes. In some ways, pro life work makes heroes of ordinary people because it brings us to do extraordinary work. So we should embrace it and rejoice in it. And so whether it's our website or internet outreaches, whether it's outside clinics or on campus, whether it's at street sessions or anywhere else at all, I'm asking you now to make yourself a promise this weekend, to join this movement for life, to become a human rights defender and to keep Ireland abortion free. And we need to be aware that one of the most shocking things about that ideology is that it believes that human life has no intrinsic worth. Instead, its proponents, like Baroness Warnock, who Jolie referred to earlier, earlier, argue that life is a commodity which is only granted value if that suits an array of vested interests. Now, this is patently abhorrent nonsense. But it's the kind of nonsense that has shaped law and public policy in many other countries. It has led to the widespread propagation of some incredibly shocking views, such as this view that holds that sick, vulnerable, and elderly people are a waste of resources, or the view that holds that children can be aborted simply because they're inconvenient. And it's the kind of dangerous, insidious ideology that made you defense 